It is, is. This has been dubbed the baseball hour for a while. Mainly, I did this to David because last summer when he wanted to talk baseball, I tried to make him do it between 6 and 7 when the audience was at its smallest and the potential for the older audience was at its largest, which is the last beacon of the baseball fan out there. Right. It was Mark's way of making fun of both me and the sport I love. Yes. And no better time to make fun of the sport you love than this morning, David, because yesterday was a terrible day for baseball. Now, we know they're negotiating. And just to lay it out for everyone, the owners a couple of weeks ago came with their proposal. Was it 81 games, 80 games, 82 games? 82. 82 games. And the players took a while to counter, countered with their 114 yep. game schedule that they wanted because yep. they wanted to get paid more. And yeah. we all knew that the players' proposal was going to have somewhere around 100 games. That seemed to be the number that we kept hearing yeah. that they wanted. All right, so they pumped it to 114, 82, 114. Seemed like we could settle in the 100 range. The owners came back with their proposal yesterday and offered a 50-game schedule. Right. 50. Yep. Owners are pouting. Make no mistake about it. The owners are like, fine, fine. You won't give us money back? You won't agree to defer money? You want your prorated money? Fine. We'll we'll give you your prorated money, but we're only going to play 50 games. You'll get about 30% of what it is you were scheduled to make this year. That's it. We're only going to play 50 games. I mean, think about that, by the way. It's less than a third of the season. Well, and not only that, I, I mean, that's two months. David, yesterday and today was the day when Ricky Henderson, this day in 81, or yesterday in 81, stole two bases to get to 50, the fastest ever to do it. That's it. Season would be over. Basically. Yeah. That's it. I mean, think about this. So let's just, for a second, the players would accept this. They're in spring training next week, three weeks or so, around July 1st or July 4th, whatever. They're Okay, they're going to play two months. So what, Labor Day weekend, the playoffs begin? You're going to be done before October? I, I mean, how? And once again... We're all dealing with a lot of stuff right now. So to say that the fans don't care, I don't know if the fans have ever cared less than they do right now. Got a lot going on. And and the least important thing on most people's mind is the baseball season. Right. Especially since it hasn't started yet. There's no emotional attachment to it whatsoever. There's no hook at all. It's not like the NBA season in which in Milwaukee and Los Angeles, in which fans there are dreaming of a championship. We got nothing. I mean, you know, Nats fan who wants to celebrate their World Series title, they're probably like, ah, hell, let's just wait another year. Let's just do it right. 50 games. I mean, tried to warn you. Listen, Seth is a love them or hate them guest. And Seth's been on this show for over a decade. And for the two years plus that we've been in our second act, almost from day one, Seth is like, you got to trust me on this. There's going to be a work stoppage in baseball. The two sides have a lot of mistrust. They don't like one another. You got to trust me on this. But, you know, when he's saying it in 2018 and 2019, it's like pat him on the head because the CBA is not up till December 1st of 2021. Well, I mean, let, let's just let's just make the announcement now. I mean, these two sides are going to war. I mean, if this is really, really where the owners are coming from as a collective group, this was their counterproposal to what the players put together. And, Dave, Come on. and David, yesterday I said to you that there are teams out there it is a known fact that there are teams out there that would lose less money by not playing. Right. The question was how many teams are there? How much right. power do those who don't 
If they're if the, this is one of the few times that the owners have equal voting here, that the Yankees and the Red Sox and the Cubs and the Dodgers aren't completely steering this ship. The only thing that I also gathered from yesterday's proposal is that there may be more owners who would rather not play a season at all for financial reasons. How much of it is for financial reasons and how much of it is like, you know what? If we're going to sacrifice a year to try to win that 2021 CBA war, let's do this. Let's do it now. Because as we all, I think, have come to the conclusion of in life, that there are certain people who are in a whole different stratosphere that don't have a reality check of what's going on in the world and don't have an idea of what, to me, catastrophic damage would happen to Major League Baseball if they don't play this year. You think it would be catastrophic? I do. I don't. I don't. And, and David, maybe the events of the last eight to ten days have, have – taking your side because there's far more important things going on in the world than the baseball season. And I know baseball is not as important, but given the fact that we're at 20 to 25% unemployment, that nearly everybody's taken it right in the pocketbook. And now the billionaires and millionaires are arguing over this and not playing. I just don't know how many, a guy like me who has been turning away from baseball slowly and slowly, you know, it won me back. I mean, the steroids in McGuire and Sosa and, and Cal Ripken won me back a little bit. That's what brought me back. And then the Tigers played well for a while. That kept me going. Right now, there's not a lot that makes me enjoy the game. And if they pull this, I'll read scores so we can talk about it on here. But I can tell you this, I won't be watching any games in 2021. See, Mark, I see this as a tremendous missed opportunity for baseball. Totally. That this was a way for baseball to grow their pie, so to speak. But let's backtrack a second. If what we've talked about in the past and what I was pounding the table about yesterday for a brief time, that baseball has become largely a regional sport, I mean, huge economic engine, 11 billion annually, but that baseball has become a regional sport. The question then becomes, would a lost season would it in 26 regions, if you will, because you've got two teams in New York, two in L.A., two in Chicago, and what have you, would would every single region collapse? No. You know what I mean? No, you're right there. And, and, and so if you think about it, you know, how many fan bases would truly be lost? Well, if you if you know what I mean, it, you know, like a year from now, I mean, people in L.A. are busy. They'd miss the Dodgers and Angels. But if all of a sudden a year from now, the Dodgers and Angels are back, my guess is Dodgers and Angels fans would come back. And you, you know what, David, you make a great point. And I guess I'm thinking in terms of I thought baseball had a monumental chance to get back into the national scene. Right. Totally. Now. Totally. And, totally. and that that's, I agree that's, with that's, I think, where my brain's coming from. I think you're right, ultimately, David, in the regional markets, it won't affect too many. It'll affect the, the, the hand, you know, what, 10, 15% of the casual fan base that may not right. like the Tigers or the Twins or the Royals or the Cubs or whatever. But I'm talking from a national standpoint. I'm watching NASCAR for crying out loud. You don't think I'd watch the game of the week right now? There's nothing Absolutely. on. You, you've, you've, you've given me a void of sports since March. I just well, want to watch. So I guess I'm in terms of the national game, if they miss a season next year comes along nationally when playoffs and World Series and All-Star games come around, I don't think it will be covered the same. I don't think it will be viewed the same. And I don't think it will be thought of the same. You might be on to something there at the end. All right. Not. Not covered the same, not thought of the same. I mean, baseball could, if they are going to blow up this season, baseball could lose its place in American society, where essentially it's fighting for number two between college football and, to some degree, the NBA. And, and the NBA will be number two from a media standpoint always. It's not going to be the number two revenue league. No. It's not going to be the number two TV numbers league, but it will be the number two covered league. But baseball's opportunity here, I mean, think about the month of July. For all that we have lined up, I mean, hockey's not going to be playing in July. The NBA ain't going to be playing in July. 
I mean, if for nothing else, Mark, if for a month, if for one month you can get your sport, no matter what that sport is, if you can get your sport front and center in front of an America that right now is thirsting for entertainment, a month. And the beauty of baseball is they play every night. It's not just a month of Saturdays or Thursdays or Sundays. It's a month. And then you, you hook them in. You don't know. I mean, you're bigger than hockey. All right. I don't know. I mean, right now the NBA is talking about, I guess they're ultimately going to decide on Thursday what it is their plan is going to be going forward. A uh, big push behind the scenes, by the way, for some of the smaller market franchises. And Mark, I think you could relate to this a little bit in your days of trying to market minor league hockey, some of the smaller NBA franchises, if I could just sidebar for a second, they are pleading with the NBA going, Hey, all right, we need to be back. We need to play some games. Now we can't go nine, 10 months without playing a game. We just can't not in our market. We can't be out of sight, out of mind for nine, 10 months, because the thought is going forward that remember the NBA stopped the night of March 11th and next season's not going to start till around Christmas. And so there are some franchises out there going, listen, whether we're in it or not, all right, we, we need to play as many games as possible so that we're st still viable in our market. We're still talked about. We, we can't go dark for nine and a half, 10 months. Interesting. Because like, I don't see any reason to continue a regular season, and they obviously do. Right. Well, it's apparently the smaller markets. Like the Knicks, are, you know, they have no interest in playing. I don't know, the Knicks are who like, is, who, the, we need who is it? Is this the T-Wolves? No, it's Oklahoma City, actually. Oklahoma and, City. And they're in the playoffs. They've had a that's, good year. I don't buy it. They're, I mean, I, re I really think that that's near an asinine statement. They're you know, the only the team in town. of the world. They're the only team in town. I I agree. You know, the Sacramentos of the world that supposedly this argument was made pretty passionately behind the scenes. It's not expected to win out. But that argument being made behind the scenes. But I think that this is a missed opportunity and a huge one for baseball. Ultimately, though, what I think it could do, it could absolutely cement it as a regional sport and number two in money only. That baseball, in some ways, would never be the same. Because the other thing they're setting themselves up for is, come on, let's be honest. I mean, we might as well put this in a way that many of us can understand. This is a relationship that right now is in a really bad spot between the owners and the players. David, and, I would not want to be the marriage counselor. Right. And if the owners and the marriage counselor is trying to, you know, mediation, you know, come up with a 90 to a 100 game season, this, that and the other thing. Hey, you agreed to this before. So why don't you play by those rules now? You get a chance to renegotiate them in 18 months. That's what the marriage counselor is trying to do. And instead, the players are like, hey, let's play as many games as possible. And let's play by the old rules as possible. And the owners are like, well, to be honest with you, we really don't have much interest in any of this. I guess we'll play 50 games. That's it. 50 games. 50. Now, hey, there are some who think the baseball season's way too long. Well, I'm one of them, but 50's way too short for... Right. Right. I mean, you know, to me, you could you know, even I want to split seasons in half. I mean, that's not even a normal half a season right. for me. David, here. I mean, that's 16 three-game sets. Basically. Yep. You couldn't play your whole league home and home. Play your division, no. but you couldn't play your whole league home and home. And home. Oh, no. I, I, mean, mean, I guess you could do two-gamers. That's 25 two-gamers, which they well, wouldn't do. In theory, they were going to have East play East, Central play Central, I, West play West. So, you know, you play six games, no, I, you're home and home against your teams in the division. I, yeah, I mean, I, I got, I got an interleague. That's it. I, I got Over. you. I, I got you. They were only playing inside their division. I'm just making the point of how short 50 games is. I'm just trying to emphasize the fact that think 
of what 50 games. This isn't basketball. This isn't hockey. No. This is 16 three-gamers. That's it. And if you do eight three-gamers just in your own division, like the Mets and Phillies play a home-and-home three-game series. That's it. That's all they're going to play one another. Well, there's 24 of your 50 right there. That's just in your division. You know, you do it with the other division, and that's your season. So it's preposterous. And it's where this relationship is. Tried telling you a few weeks ago before our hiatus that there's a lot of mistrust and there's a lot of dislike. Period. I mean, they genuinely do not like one another right now. You can't say that about any of the other sports. You really can. I mean, the NFL, PA, and the NFL just signed a 10-year extension. I mean, the NBA, Chris Paul, LeBron James, are buddy-buddy with Adam Silver. They're going to work something out whenever it is that they have to negotiate something again. Even hockey, which at times has gotten contentious, is not nearly as contentious now as baseball. They hate each other. They don't like each other. They don't trust one another. They don't want to do a deal with the other. They are the couple in which if one person comes to the table with an idea, the other side is inherently against it. Why? Because it was her idea or his idea. So therefore, I don't like it. It must suck. That's where they are. So, Mark, imagine the short-term future of this sport. Because, you know, we've said this is the beginning of the 2021-22 CBA negotiation. And if this is where we are now, I mean, imagine this season gets scrapped. Or it's an absolute joke of a season. That's what gets agreed to. An absolute joke. Well, well we begin next year. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's why David we're not playing fifty games. the The players' association will never agree to it because it will have been deemed the first loss in the twenty twenty two CBA nego- negotiations. Correct. This is essentially you want to call it the prelim. You want to call it the first round of the fight. What, whatever you want to call it, but they whoever gives loses in their own eyes, and. The other part of this is, no matter how this works out for the 2020 season, David, as you mentioned, these the animosity towards both sides, this isn't being used as starting negotiations early. It's separating negotiations early, actually. It's doing right. the opposite. And most of you don't pay attention to hockey. But, you know, hockey said some times here recently where they have not been crazy about one another. But this season has actually brought about Donald Fear, who used to represent the Baseball Players Association, now represents the hockey players. Fear and Bettman have actually discussed a few things during this time. They have worked together to try to salvage their season, and it's actually led to both sides talking about some other issues, like the players playing in the Olympics and other forms of revenue sharing down the road. So they've actually used this opportunity to make their relationship a little bit better. Whereas in baseball, obviously, they are blowing it up. It is an interesting poll question. We didn't even have one yesterday. No, I I couldn't give you that poll question, David. I really couldn't. uh, I thought it was funny. (laughs) I did. I thought it was funny. Uh, for those you know, just joining you know, though, us, it was it was one of those poll questions that I think was funny on the air. If people start reading it, I don't know how much of a sense of humor they would have had. No, all right, that was my fear. When we put losing a wallet up uh, against losing a kidney, and you're more upset about a wallet, I was worried about that. Right, that was going to be the big question. You know, I've had three big losses during our second act. I've lost my phone. I've lost my wallet. And now I've lost a kidney. <laughs> We were going to grade the losses yesterday in our poll question. I, I don't know why we didn't do it, to be honest with you. We had a big audience. I think we would have gotten a good response. I, I think we should have done it. But we could ask the hypothetical, and maybe it's not a hypothetical. Maybe since baseball fan is thinking about it, 
and sports fans certainly, well, they've got their opinions about a lot of things these days. Whether or not, hey, if baseball scraps the season, are you done with baseball? All right, I'm in. Uh, that's early nomination. No, no, no. I'm in. Early nomination. All right. You know, don't know how we'll word it. You know, whether they come up with a joke of a season and a 50-game season would be a joke or whether or not the two sides just can't agree and there is no baseball season. If MLB doesn't play in 2020, are you done with MLB? Because, Mark, I got to be honest. You know, I'm, I'm in my mid-50s now. You know, it's a lot easier to move on from something when you're in your mid-50s. It really is. I mean, it'd just be like, uh, I can't waste my time with this. If, if These yahoos. I mean, we've all been in relationships before in which we're like, you know, I care for you, but this is too much work. Or I, I care for you, but I don't have time for this. I mean, man, oh, man, this is more aggravation than it's worth. And you wonder whether or not baseball would turn out to be that sport, particularly since it's a marathon. Baseball's the sport in which they need you to have their hooks into you. It's not the casual sport. It may be to get somebody to go to a Mighty Muscles game. I mean, you know, that to get somebody to go, that's very casual. And, and then even watch. at the MLB level, I mean, going to a ball game is still a great time. And that's another thing, by the way. You ever been a part of a minor league team that didn't play a season or come close to not playing a season? God, no. Okay. I mean, the Mighty Muscles aren't going to play a game this year. No. Hey. And in their case, you know, they did renamed a new logo. And, you know, I mean, if you're Wait ever a minute. Going- Wait a minute. That's it. Think about it. The Mighty Muscles changed their name, and the whole world has gone to hell in a handbasket. When did they make their name change? I can't blame everything that's gone on. on I the Mighty am. Muscles. Oh, well, I know you are. I will say this, though. The Mighty Muscles have a staggering marketing opportunity the likes of which I don't know if anyone else in the history of professional sports has ever had. What if they change their name again? You know I'm for that. And and never play a game as the mighty as muscle. As a muscle. Think about that. Think about that marketing opportunity. Think about it from being able to, you know, sell stuff. You know, hey, what is that you're wearing? Oh, it's the Mighty Muscles. Who are they? Well, actually, they never played. I mean, just just think about that, Mark, from an opportunity. It would make me happy. Turn a negative into a positive. That that could be the ultimate one right there. I mean, they did it in December. Nine, they well, did it in December, right at the end of 2019. And look what happened in 2020. That's putting an awful lot on their lap, Mark. I mean, that really is. That is putting an awful lot on their lap. I got to tell you. I mean, you know. Am I wrong? A lot's happened. Am I wrong? I will grant you that. Well, see, you're very negative on the whole mighty muscles. I'm open-minded to it. So, but boy, that's an awful lot on their lap. Let me tell you. Miller and Moulton. 479-5551 is our phone number. That's how you can chime into the show. Call or text in on the Williamson Brothers Marine and Roofing text and talk line 479-5551. I do think it's an opportunity for them. I do. They could have their third name change in a calendar year. Sell some more stuff. Have a footnote in American sports history. I think it'd be outstanding. 